continue in worshiping and praising you that you may establish your word and your truth in us, Father. So lead us by your Ruach, I pray. But you will be done, Father, this day. Let us see and hear you clearly. Hallelujah. Brock your name, Father Yahuwah. Taking Yahuwah's name in vain. Because of the greatness of the name of Yahuwah, any use of Yahuwah's name that brings dishonor on him or on his character is taking his name in vain. The third of the Ten Commandments forbids taking or using Yahuwah's name in an irrelevant manner because that would indicate a lack of respect for Yahuwah himself, a lack of reverence and fear. A person who misuses Yahuwah's name will not be held guiltless by Yahuwah, according to Exodus 20, verse 7. In the Tanakh, bringing dishonor to Yahuwah's name was done by failing to perform an oath or a vow taken in his name, in Leviticus 19:12. The man who used Yahuwah's name to legitimize his oath and then broke his promise would indicate his lack of reverence for Yahuwah as well as a lack of fear of his kadosh retribution. It was essentially the same as denying Yahuwah's existence. For believers, however, there is no need to use Yahuwah's name to legitimize an oath as we are not to take oaths in the first place. Let our yes be yes, and our no be no, according to Matthew 5, verses 33 through 37. To understand the severity of taking Yahuwah's name in vain, we must first see Yahuwah's name for his, from his perspective as outlined in Scripture. See, the concept embodied in Yahuwah's name plays an important and a unique role in Scripture. Yahuwah's nature and attributes the totality of his being and especially his esteem are reflected in his name, which we see in Psalms 8, verse 1. Psalms 111, 9 tells us his name is Kadosh and awesome. And Yahushua's prayer begins by addressing Yahuwah with the praise, set apart be your name, Matthew 6, verse 9. An indication that a reverence for Yahuwah and his name should be foremost in our prayers. Too often we barge into Yahuwah's presence with presumptuous to-do lists for him without being mindful of his kadoshness, his awesomeness, and the vast chasm that separates our nature from his. That we are even allowed to come before his throne is due only to his gracious merciful love for his own, according to Hebrews 4.16. We must never take that grace for granted. Yahuwah said, pay close attention to all of my instructions. You must not call on the name of any other Alhim. Do not even speak their names. This is one of the most important things scripture says we should know. We need to know the importance of knowing his name. So we are not found with another all he name on our lips. It is important that we declare we know who saves us and we intend our praise and worship to be directed towards. So it is given to the one it is intended, the only one that is worthy to receive it. This is why he has commanded us to not take his name in vain. So are you breaking the third commandment? Let's see. Many take the third commandment to mean that we should not use the Heavenly Father's name alongside a swear word or profanity. And I can see where it certainly might mean this. Others say that taking his name on our lips while living a life of sin is another way of taking his name in vain. And I agree with this also. However, I have found that the third commandment means much more than this. Replacing the Heavenly Father's name with a title of our own choosing, such as the Lord, G-O-D, Adonai, or Hashem, is another way of taking his name in vain. 
So the question becomes, what is his name? How is it written? How is it pronounced in English? Since so many say that this is how we say his name in English. Yahuwah. It's spelled with a yod. And it means a hand. It's in representation of the hand. It means to work. It means to throw, to worship. And it transliterates, which means it sounds like the letter Y. And it produces a Y sound. Then we have a hey. This is in the image of a man with his arms raised in the pictograph. And is the shape of a window in the modern Hebrew. And it means to look, reveal your breath. And it translates, again, it sounds like the letter H. As a Hebrew vowel letter, it produces the ah sound. Together we have yah. The next and one of the most important letters that is often what leads people in error is the ua. Or in the modern, they say the vav or the wa. It's in the image of a tent peg or a nail. Let that sink in for a minute. And it's shaped like an arm that reaches down. It means nail, add, secure, and hook. And the ua is also the number six in the number of man. It's the sixth number in the Hebrew alphabet, and it is also the number of man. Yahushua came as the son of man. And in the Paleo Picto, it translates as the you, or sometimes as an O. But it, in the modern Hebrew, as a W. But in the original, it was double U's. Also, it's translated as a V in the modern. So, as a Hebrew vowel letter, it produces an O sound, like a W, like the sound of Ruach. And then we have another hey, again. The image of a man with his arms raised in the pictograph. And it is in the shape of that window in the modern Hebrew, which transliterates the letter H. It means to look, reveal your breath. As a Hebrew vowel letter, it also produces that ah sound. And in totality, we have Yahuwah. Very simple, even a child can understand. Some describe the name in the Paleo Hebrew as revealing. Behold the nail. Behold the hand. I see a hand reaching through the window in the Shemayim. Revealing the nail in the hand that secures man. Bringing man through the window of Shemayim. Revealing the breath, the life giver. In vain. Let's take a look at what this really truly means. In the pictograph or in the, in the Abri Hebrew, it is spelled Shu. In the modern Hebrew, it's Shab. Spelled with a sheen and an Ua. It really means worthless or nothingness or as also translated as not. The sheen, the very first letter, means sharp or pressed, to eat, to consume, to destroy. And then we have the ua, to add, secure, to hook, to nail, or to peg. So in vain, in the Hebrew word, in the modern Hebrew is shav, and it literally means nothingness or worthlessness. It's the H7723, which comes from the H7722 in a sense of desolating. Shab. It's a masculine. And it means emptiness, vanity, falsehood. Emptiness, nothingness, as well as vanity. Emptiness of speech or lying. And worthlessness of conduct. See, the Hebrew word Shav, the H7723, is used 53 times and is translated as vain or vanity. 
44 of the 53 uses in the King James, but just 21 times in the NAS, which choose to use false or deceitful 25 times. See, the root verb is presumed to be shove with possibly two separate ideas. First is the making a noise, destroying and laying waste. And the second of being evil or worthless. The two could be reasonably reconciled or combined in the idea of an evil act of rendering something as worthless, such as destroying a structure or even someone's reputation. So the first use of Shav is the famous dialogue in Exodus 20, verse 7, where we are, set, uh, we are told or commanded better that you shall not take the name of Yahuwah, your all human vain. Deuteronomy 5.11. The very next use, however, is in Exodus 23, verse 1. You shall not raise a false report. Deuteronomy 5.20. Do not bear false witness against your neighbors. So it is interesting that outside of the two references in Exodus is essentially repeated in Deuteronomy. The word Shah does not occur again in the Torah nor the historical books. It is next seen in the wisdom literature of Job and Psalms, in the major prophets and some five instances among the minor prophets, Hosea, Jonah, uh, Zechariah and Malachi. But fortunately, the prophetic works offer us some parallelisms of use. Do we find Shav occurring in poetic parallelisms with Job 11.11 11 and Psalms 41.6, where wickedness or vain effort, which is the word vain, the Strong's 205. Psalms 139.20, wicked intent, mesima. Strong's 4209, Job 31.5 and Psalms 24.4, deceit, Murma, the Strong's 48.20, and also in Psalms 26.4, conceal, hide, deceitful, secretive, that Hebrew word is alam, Strong's 59.56. Job 7 verse 3, toil, travail, that word is among. Strong's 5999. Yeshayahu, or is Isaiah, echoes some of the same parallelisms as above when he writes, no one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. Isaiah 59.4. Here he uses Amal, evil, and Avin, iniquity, but the word translated lies is the word shav. While the word for empty or vanity in some translations is actually tahu, the Strong's 84.14, as used in Genesis 1-2 for the earth formless or and void state. So in Jeremiah 18.15, shav has become virtually synonymous with idol and stands for the phrase they have burned incense to vanity or worthlessness. Ezekiel uses Shab to describe lying and empty visions of false prophets and divinists. In Ezekiel 20 or 12, 24, 13, verses 6 through 9, 23, 21, verse 23, 29, and also 22, verse 28. So perhaps one of the most famous verses using Shab is. Unless Yahuwah builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalms 127 verse 1. This pointlessness is also seen in Malachi 3.14. It is vain to serve Elohim. What was the point of the prophet in keeping his will? Thus, Shav covers a range of meanings from falsehood to wickedness, and the English translations do not take you his name in vain is a bit limp and could better be rendered do not treat Yahuwah's name falsely or wickedly, thereby making it worthless, i.e. making a false oath in his name or attributing evil to him, either of which destroys Yahuwah's reputation.
Webster's Dictionary definition of the word vain is having no real substance, value, importance, empty, it's void or worthless, unsatisfying, thy vain excuse, destitute or forge or uh, efficacy, affecting no purpose, fruitless, ineffectual as vain toil or a vain attempt. So considering the meaning of the word vain, what greater way to bring you who is named to emptiness or worthlessness, to bring it to naught and having no real substance, value, or purpose than to remove his name altogether from Scripture and substitute it with a title of our own choosing. Exodus 20, verse 7, Do not bring the name of Yahuwah your Alhim to naught, for Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught, to bring his name to nothingness, to make it worthless, to obliterate and to blot out the personal name of our almighty creator, Yahuwah, and mask it with a title of the L-O-R-D, Adonai, or Hashem, is utter blasphemy, and it brings it to nothingness because his name, the character, and the meaning of his name has been hidden and is not known by the world and therefore has been made worthless has been brought to naught. And in Deuteronomy 5, verse 11, you shall not take the name of Yahuwah your Alhim in vain. That's at 7723. For Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. That takes his name in Shu or Shav. The same Hebrew word, Shav, can also be found in another commandment just a few verses later. But in this instance, it is translated differently. Deuteronomy 5.20 in the King James Version, Neither shall thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Here we have the same Hebrew word translated false. Might this shed some light on the third commandment as well? We know that to say that the name of the Heavenly Father is the L-O-R-D is actually a false statement. Most translations are full of false, trans, uh, false statements. For instance, the King James Version reads in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the L-O-R-D, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The above is not a true statement. His name is not the L-O-R-D. His name is Yahuwah. The L-O-R-D is not a translation or even a transliteration of the original name. It is a substitution of the original name. The translators did not translate. They purposely substituted the true name of the Heavenly Father for something else so that they could follow their tradition. It should instead read, I am Yahuwah. That is my name, and my esteem or my glory will I not give to another, neither my halu or my praise to graven images. So if you want to keep the Ten Commandments, we should never replace Yahuwah's name with a false name or a title of our own choosing. Doing so would be breaking the Third Commandment. This is not the only way to break the Third Commandment, but we can see that it is certainly one way of doing so. We are not supposed to add or to take away from scriptures. But in doing this, man has chosen to do add and to take away. They did both. Yahuwah considers it important enough to include something about his name in the Ten Commandments. He considered it important enough to include a warning that would not be held guiltless if we choose to break it. Therefore, in spite of what others may think, let's keep the commandments by restoring what Yahuwah placed there originally. Let's set aside the vain traditions and walk in the original truth of Yahuwah, just as he inspired it. You need to know his name and you need to call upon it. This is one of the main reasons so you don't allow your praise and your worship to be given to another Alhim or stolen from you by another Alhim, another name or title that was falsely changed or added in the English Bibles as the L-O-R-D, which is not, again, a translation or even a transliteration of the true name. 
So why was it used? Baal is known by the name or the title, i.e. the Lord, i.e. the L-O-R-D. Now some will argue here that Baal in, in Hebrew also means Lord and Master, and yes, it does. But there's also a deity that has been stealing the name of Yahuwah. His name is Baal, and he is also named, if you transliterate that name, uh, or translate that name, it all takes you all the way back to Baal, because that is what he is known by. Baal is also known to be Yahuwah's adversary. He's also known as Hasatan, the adversary, the Satan, if you will. See, other Elohim-type statements that we see in Scripture, the five I wills that are found in the book of Isaiah. How did you come to fall from the Shemayim, morning star, falsely translated? And another word that was inputted into the Scriptures is the Latin word Lucifer, which many, of course, have taken as the name of, but it's not. It's, a, it's actually a transliteration meaning morning star. Son of the dawn, how did you come to be cut down to the ground, conquerors of nations? You thought to yourself, I will ascend the Shemayim. I will raise my throne above all heme stars. I will sit on the mount of assembly far away in the north. I will rise past the tops of the clouds, and I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 14. First, I will ascend into the Shemayim. Hasatan was not satisfied, nor our other Alhim, if you will, are being satisfied with the high position that Yahuwah gave him. He had already given him all kinds of gifts and beauty. He was, given, he was the guardian of Yahuwah's throne with authority over who had access to Yahuwah's presence and his position as the uh, possessor of the earth in its original creation. He wanted a higher position than he had already had. And the only higher position was Yahuwah's throne and the right to sit at the right hand, which was given only to the Mashiach. Ephesians 1, verses 20 and 21. So with the first, I will... It is the desire of other Alhim to ascend above or to take the place of Yahuwah on his throne. The second, I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahuwah. Whenever the word star is used symbolically, it is always a symbol of angels or Moloch, Molochim, whether fallen or unfallen. We see in Job 38, 7 and Jude 13, Revelation 1, verses 20, 9, verse 1, as well as 12, verse 4. The next I will expresses the desire to become the sole authority over the Malkin, or the Malk, the stars. Third, I will sit upon the Mount of Assembly in the uttermost parts of the north. These terms are used elsewhere to describe the millennial kingdom, such as Psalms 48.2 and Isaiah 2.2, 2, 4, verse 5 and 6. He knew that Yahuwah's program was for his son, Yahusha, to rule as the Mashiach over Yisrael and ultimately the earth. And with this, I will, is the expression of his desire to become the ruler over Yisrael and the earth. Fourth, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Whenever the word cloud is used symbolically, it is always a symbol of the Shekinah glory like we see in Exodus 16.10, 40 verse 34 through 38, and 1 Kings 8 verses 10 through 11, Matthew 26 verse 64. This unique glory, a glory that belongs only to Yahuwah, is something other Elohim desire for themselves. The fifth, I will make myself like the Most High. So whenever Yahuwah is referred to as the Most High, it emphasizes Yahuwah as the possessor of the Shemayim in the earth, which we see in Genesis 14, verses 18 and 19. And with this, I will, other Elohim, express the desire to become the sole possessor of everything that Yahuwah created in Genesis 1-1, who wishes to be like Yahuwah in authority and power 
and control and desire to be worshipped as Yahuwah, and thus the removal of the name of Yahuwah and his son Yahusha, replaced with a title or a name of the L-O-R-D, Jehovah or Jesus, J-C, if you will. The whole world calls upon and, and they give their praise and worship that is supposed to go to Yahuwah alone, but it, other Alhim names are being declared and being spoken. And again, this is breaking the commandment. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called Alhim or is worshipped so that he sets himself up at, in Alhim's temple, his church, his synagogue, even in the Bible, proclaiming himself to be Alhim, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Hasatan, who claim to be Jews, not Hebrews, though they are not. They're claiming to be, but they're not, but are liars. And I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Revelation 3, 9. So we have to be careful of what we are declaring out of our mouths. What name are we declaring as our Alhim? We don't want to be part of the synagogue of Hasatan that are declaring, uh, that, are be called, that are called liars. Because they don't, they say they know, but they really don't. They don't do what he says. There's a scripture I can't recall off the top of my head, but it says that they are liars because of that. They don't keep or they don't do. Scripture declares Yahuwah's name almost 7,000 times. I think it's 6,823 times, I believe, which transliterates as Yahuwah, as I have broken down earlier. Before it was removed and is changed to what it is now in the Bibles as L-O-R-D, A-K-A, in my opinion, Baal, Strong's Concordance. We can take a look at these links here. They take you right to that so you can see how it is broken down and how it shows that he is known as L-O-R-D. See, this very same Baal has been stealing the Father's name from his people from the very beginning, as Scripture declares. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams that they tell one another will make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Jeremiah 23, verses 26 and 27. And in that day, declares Yahuwah, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me Baal. For I will remove the names of the Baals from her mouth, and they shall be remembered by name no more. Hosea 2, verses 16 17. The name of Yahuwah. Genesis 4, verses 26. And to Seth. To him also a son was born, and he called his name Enoch. Then men began to call on the name of Yahuwah. Genesis 13, 4. To the place of the altar, which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of Yahuwah. Yeshayahu 42, 8. I am Yahuwah. That is my name. And my esteem I do not give another, nor my praise to idols. Daniel 9.19 O Yahuwah, hear, O Yahuwah, forgive. O Yahuwah, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake. My Elohim for your city and your people are called by your name. Ezekiel 39.8 and I shall make my set-apart name known in the midst of my people, Yasharah, and not let my set-apart name be profaned anymore. And the Gentiles shall know that I am Yahuwah, the set-apart one of Yasharah. Ezekiel 20, 39, As for you, O house of Yasharah, thus saith the master Yahuwah, Go, serve each other, uh, sir, uh, go, serve each of you his idols. And afterwards, if you are not listening to me, but do not profane my set-apart name anymore with your gifts and your idols. Jeremiah 16, 21. Therefore, see, I am causing them to know 
This time I cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahuwah. Jeremiah 23, verse 26. Till then shall it be in the hearts of the prophets, the prophets of falsehood, and the prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone relates to his neighbors, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. A shocking fact, Webster's Dictionary defines Baal as the L-O-R-D. Many today blaspheme the name of our Father and Savior with the pagan name L-O-R-D. Jeremiah, Yahoo, or Jeremiah 31, 33. For this is the covenant that I make with the house of Yisrael after those days, declares Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah, my instructions, in their inward parts, and I'll write it on their hearts. And I shall be their Alhim, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall they teach each other, one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, for they shall know. They shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares Yahuwah. For I shall forgive their crookednesses and remember their sins no more. This saith Yahuwah, who gives the sun for light by day and the law of the moon and the stars for the light by night, who stirs up the seas and its waves roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. If these Torah or these instructions vanish, from before me, declares Yahuwah, then the seed of Yisrael shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Zephaniah 3.9 For then I shall turn unto the people a clean language, so that they all call on the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one shoulder. Yes, Yahu 52.6 says, therefore, my people shall know my name. And in that day, for I am the one who is speaking. If you are to be one of his chosen people, then you must know his name. Exodus 3.15. And Elohim said further to Moshe, thus you are to say to the children of Yisrael, Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yazik, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me to you, and this is my name forever, and this is my remembrance to all generations. Exodus or Shemot 6 3. And I appeared to Abram, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and El Shaddai. And by my name, Yahuwah, was I not known to them. Malachi 2 2. If you do not hear, and if you do not take it to heart to give esteem to my name, saith Yahuwah of hosts, I shall send a curse upon you. I shall curse your Baraka, and indeed I have cursed them, because you did not take it to heart. See, I shall rebuke your seed and scatter dung before your faces, the dung of your festivals, and you shall take away with it. Yahuwah is serious about us knowing his name and giving esteem and honor to his name and also to his feast, which we are about to enter into next week. So prepare yourselves. Hallelujah. Number 627. Thus, they shall put my name on the children of Yisrael, and I myself shall barak them. Micah 4.5. For all the people walked, each one in the name of his mighty one. But we walk in the name of Yahuwah, our Elohim, forever and ever. Micah 6, 9. The voice of Yahuwah cries to the city, and let sound wisdom see your name. Hear the rod in him who appointed it. Second Chronicles, or Debraim, seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil or wicked ways, then I shall hear from the Shemayim and forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Exodus nine sixteen. And for this reason I have raised you up in order to show you my power and in order to declare my name in all the earth. 
Yahuwah wants you to proclaim his name so that those that don't know will come to know and change their ways and come to him and declare his name alone. Exodus 27. You do not bring the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to naught or nothing or worthlessness. For Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who does this, who brings his name to naught, nothingness, makes it worthless. Proverbs 34. Who has gone up to the Shemayim and come down? Who has gathered the winds in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know it, declare it. Now you know it. Declare it. Deuteronomy 6.13. Fear Yahuwah your Alhim and serve him and swear by his name. Deuteronomy 10.20. Fear Yahuwah your Alhim, serve him and cling to him and swear by his name. Deuteronomy 28 verses 58, 59. If you do not guard to do all the words of this Torah that are written in this book, to fear this esteemed and awesome name, Yahuwah your Alhim, then Yahuwah shall bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and lasting plagues, and grievous and lasting sickness. Maybe that's what's going on in this world. We need to restore the name. Put it on the lips of his people. Allow them to declare it loud and with honor and full esteem. Yes, Yahoo 52, 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name in that day, for I am the one who is speaking. Zechariah 14, 9. And Yahuwah shall be sovereign over all the earth. And in that day there shall be one Yahuwah, and his name one, Echad. Psalm, or Tilim 5.11. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because you sheltered them. And let those who love your name exult in you. Psalms. 717, I give thanks to Yahuwah according to his righteousness and praise the name of Yahuwah most high. Psalm 8.1, O oh, Yahuwah, our master, how excellent is your name in the earth, all the earth. You who set your splendor above the Shemayim. Psalm 44, 20 and 21, if you have forgotten the name of our Alhim, our stretched out or stretched out our hand to the foreign mighty one, would all he not search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Psalm 63, 4. Therefore I barak you while I live. Your name I lift up my hands. Hallelujah. Psalm 69, 35, 36. For Elohim shall save Zion and build the cities of Yehuda and they shall dwell there and possess it, and the seed of his servants inherit it, and those who love his name dwell in it. Are you dwelling in his name? Psalm 72, 17. Let his name be forever, and his name continue before the sun, and let them barak themselves in him. Let all the nations call him Baruch, or blessed. Psalm 72, 19, and Baruch, or blessed be his esteemed name forever, and let all the earth be filled with his esteem. Amen? Amen. Psalm 74, 18, remember this. The enemy has reproached Yahuwah, and a foolish people has despised your name. Psalm 83, 16, fill their faces with shame, and let them seek your name, O Yahuwah. Psalm 83, 18, and let them know that you, whose name is Yahuwah, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Psalm 91, 14, because he cleaves to me in love, therefore I deliver him. I set him on high because he has known my name. Psalm 93, 3, they praise your name, great and awesome, it is set apart. Psalm 99, 6, Moshe and Aaron were among his priests, and Shemiel 
was among those calling upon his name. They called upon Yahuwah, and he answered them. Psalm 100, verse 4 and 5, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, Barak his name. For Yahuwah is good, his kindness is everlasting, and his truth to all generations. Psalms 103.1 says, Barak Yahuwah, O my being, and all that is within me, Barak, or bless, his set-apart name. Psalms 105.3, make your boast in his set-apart name. Let the hearts rejoice of those seeking Yahuwah. Psalm 106.8, but he saved them for his name's sake to make known his might. Psalms 106.47, save us, O Yahuwah, our Ahalhim, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your set-apart name, to exalt you, to exalt in your hallelujah, to exalt in your praise, hallelujah. Psalm 111.9, he sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Set apart and awesome is his name. Psalm 118.26, Baruch is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. We shall barak you from the house of Yahuwah, Matthew 23, 39. Yahushua quoted this scripture. Psalm 138, 2, I bow myself towards your set-apart your set-apart temple, and I give thanks to your name for your kindness and for your truth, for you have made great your word and your name above all. Psalm 148, 5, let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for he commanded and they were created. Psalm 148, 13. Let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the Shemayim. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Matthew 10, 22, and you shall be hated by all for my name's sake, but he shall have endured to the end, shall be saved. But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. Matthew 23, 39, Yahushua said, for I say to you, from now on you shall by no means see me until you say Baruch is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. Matthew 24, 9. Then they shall deliver you up to affliction and kill you, and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Yehuchanan, or John 3, 18. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth son of Elohim. This scripture clearly says, that if we do not believe in the name of the only son of Yahuwah, you are condemned already. So the question is, what is his name? The answer is Yahusha HaMashiach. That's the name of his son. You also now know the name of the father, Yahuwah. Yehuqanon 543, Yahusha said, I have come in my father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. Could that be the names they throw out there that we talked about earlier that we have to be found with on our lips? Yahusha has the meaning Yahuwah is salvation. Yahusha carries his father's name, Yahuwah. So according to scripture, there is no other name that provides salvation. Yehokanon 7, 6, I have revealed your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They are yours and you gave them to me. And they have guarded your word. Yehokanon 17, 11. And I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I came to you, set apart father, guard them in your name, which you have given me, so that they might be one as we are one. Yehokanon 17, 12. When I was with them in the world, I was guarding them in your name, which you had given to me. And I watched over them, and not one of them perished except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
Yehokanan 1726, and I have made your name known to them and shall make it known so that the love with which you love me might be in them and I in them. Acts 10.43. This one, to this one, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone believing in him does not receive forgiveness of sin. Acts 4.12. And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the Shemayim given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 2.21. Joel 2. 232, and it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahusha, which means in Hebrew, Yahuwah saves, shall be saved. Philippians, I want to go back to that one real quick because there's a reason that this is quoted. The name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. It is Yahuwah that is our Savior. It is Yahuwah that saves according to all of Scripture, and He is choosing His Son that carries his name, that declares who saves you. That is the key. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Alhim, therefore, has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That the name of Yahushua HaMashiach every knee should bow, of those in the Shemayim and those on the earth and those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Yahushua HaMashiach is master to the esteem of Alhim or Yahuwah the Father. 2 Thessalonians 1.12 So that the name of our master Yahushua HaMashiach is esteemed in you and you in him according to the favor of our Alhim and master Yahushua HaMashiach. 2 Timothy 2.19 However, the solid foundation of Alhim stands firm having this seal. Yahuwah knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, turn away from unrighteousness. Hebrews, or Abri, 1, 4. Having become so much better than the messengers, he has inherited a more excellent name than them. Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. For both he who sets apart and those who are being set apart are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I shall announce your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I shall sing halu to you, praise to you. Hebrews, or Aubrey 13, 15. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice or a slaughter offering of halu or praise to Alhim, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Kepha, or 1 Peter 4.14. If you are reproached for the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, you are Baruch because the Ruach of esteem and the Alhim rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part he is halu, he is praised. 1 John, or Yehukanan 5.13. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of Alhim, so that you know that you possess everlasting life, and so that you believe in the name of the Son of Yahuwah. Revelation 2, 3. And you have been bearing up and having endurance and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Revelation 3, 8. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one is able to shut it, that you have little power yet have guarded my word and have not denied my name. Revelation 14, 1. And I looked and I saw a lamb sitting on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written upon their foreheads. The father's name that will be found on their foreheads will be, will be none other than Yahuwah alone. Revelation 15, 4. Who shall not bear you, O Yahuwah, and esteem your name. Who shall not fear you, O Yahuwah, and esteem your name? Because you alone are kind, because all nations shall come and worship before you, for your righteousness have been made manifest. 
Revelation 22, 4. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be upon their foreheads. Now you know. What are you going to do with this information? Repent and return unto the Father, Yahuwah, and his ways. Hallelujah. That is the message. He's trying to tell the world, reveal to the world the name that is above all names. He's trying to reveal to the world the name that has been stolen from them, that has been, that has been covered up. And now it's a name that is being declared to the world that's setting the captives free and is returning the lost sheep of Yasserel back unto the one that loves them. Praise Yahuwah for your name. And thank you for allowing us to understand the power and the importance of your name, that we should safeguard it, that we should protect it, and that we should no longer call upon any other name so that we do not bring your name in vain, that we do not bring your name to naught, because you're our Alhim. We love you, Father. We will declare your name forevermore. Praise your name, Father Yahuwah. Hallelujah. All right. Brother Rod. Are you with me, brother? There he is. I need some wisdom this morning, brother. I want to hear. So where's the wisdom? What's you showing you this morning? What what you feeling from what you heard this morning? Is it is this enlightened anything that you didn't know already? Or share with us, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> I thought it was a very good um uh breakdown of, of the importance of the name of Yahuwah. Um and I believe that's the beginning of the understanding that we find ourselves in, you know. First time I heard Yahuwah, I was like, well, what are you talking about? I said this to my friend. Um and I and I think I think all of all of the the, the message was accurate in terms of you know the name it being replaced and the importance of knowing who he is and the power that's in his name. And you know, I just want to add to um the understanding. If you, if, you, if you don't mind, when it comes to the third commandment itself, um, it's definitely much more than just his name saying it the right way. Um, because, <clears throat> for example, Matthew, Matthew chapter seven, um, you know, after Yahushua gives the Beatitudes and he continues to exert, exhort the multitudes and, and really break down toward to them. That's, that's what he's doing. <clears throat> he says in um, chapter 7, verse, <clears throat> excuse me, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, my master, my master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, master, master, have we not prophesied in thy name? and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And I think the key focus of what he's saying is um, <clears throat> those that do with the will of my father. So when we look at the third commandment, it's speaking of more than just saying his name, although that's part of it. And I think you expounded on that well. The other part of that is that 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 Torah is an action. It is it is it, it, more than an action. It's an exhibition. It's not, you know, these aren't a list of rules that get us salvation. These these laws, statutes, and judgments are already blood bought by the blood of Yahushua. So, so then they become, you know, um, things that uh, come from the majesty of his presence, right? All of the things mentioned in Torah, the intricacies of, of, of how we treat our neighbors, down to how he's breaking down Torah as we're going through now, you know, giving us the intricacies of if someone breaks into your house, how you treat a thief if you catch them or if 
you know, he gets away. You know, how you treat the ox, how you treat an ox that falls into a hole. You know, all of these things are a reflection of his character in us that we exhibit that he wants to see in us. So in other words, if you say, if you call my name, then these things are what you do. So, so, so literally he's saying, do not put my name on and act as if you are in a play. Don't wear my name as a costume, but then act otherwise. Don't call on my name, don't wear my name, don't claim my name, don't say that you are of me, but your actions aren't what follows in Torah. You know, so it's, it's, it's more about exhibiting his character that he wants to see in us. I want to see these things in you because I have blood bought you, because you belong to me. And I think it's, it's much more than, because there's a whole lot of people that scream Yahuwah. They scream Yahuwah, they scream Yahuwah, they scream Yahuwah, you know, they all of the names, they got it down to a T, Yahuwah, uh, um, what are the other ones? Um, uh, 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 I forgot, but you know what I'm saying, they, they, you know, everybody has yeah, a pronunciation, but it's about exhibiting his character. These, these, these things in Torah are identifying markers for those that are his. These are the rules to live by to be different from the rest of the world, from what everybody else is doing. He even tells us to refrain from the things that they are doing so that we know by our fruits, you will know me, you will know me. They will know you. They will know me, you know, because you exhibit them. So. Um, I just wanted to throw in the fact that it's much more than just saying the name. That's very important. That's part of it. But this is more about what Yahuwah, you know, as we read through Torah, I find more and more and more. It's more about us understanding that these are the things that he wants to see in us that make us true, that make us real Hebrews, right? You know, period. End of sentence. So. I agree. I concur. That is exactly the point. You know, it's not so much the exact pronunciation. Right. There's different variations of that. How and that that isn't the important point. Like I was emphasizing, it's his character. It's it's who he is. It's encased in his name. It's the message that's contained in his name. And I like the point that you brought out about in Matthew where he says, "I never knew you." That's a profound statement. People think, well, what do you mean he never knew him? He knows everybody, right? What he's saying is from the very beginning, he, he knew who was going to be his. And he didn't know them as one of his because they are evil in heart. They're not going to submit. They're not going to surrender. They're not going to fulfill the will of Yahuwah. You know, he already foreknew this. That's why he said this to them. They are lawless ones. You know, you can say the name and, 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 and maybe even say it perfectly right. But if you're living in an unrighteous way, then it, it, you're not his because you're not displaying his character. You're not displaying anything that has to do with his Ruach, who he is, you know. And that's the point that's really important here because it's all about doing and becoming. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, no, no. I was just, um, I just remembered the other name I was trying to think of. Yeah, I was shy, you know. So, so just to add to, you know, you know, because I don't want to call it ridiculous because it's not ridiculous to want to search and know his name. But it's ridiculous to think that, that saying his name the right way does something for you if you don't exhibit his character. Because all of the actions follow what he's saying. You know, don't cloak. Don't put on me. Don't wear me. But when people see you, they don't recognize me. You're bringing my name to nothing, you know, is what he's saying. So, right. Great job, man. Great message. And uh, I pray that we all see the, the culmination of his words, what they mean. It's not just a group of rules to follow. It is literally markers for, for what makes us recognizable as his, as his set-apart people. You know, the, the, this is his majesty. This is what we look like when we are glorified. You know, anything different from this is not him. 
You know, that's that's why there's intricacies in what he's saying. You know, we'll continue in Exodus. I'm telling you, going through this, through Exodus this time has really opened my eyes to to what he's really saying to us and how he wants us to react and act. So, praise God. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm loving the eye-opening effects that he's doing right now. You know, these things that are so deep, and, and he, he's the only one that can reveal these things to us. And once we understand and see him and for who he is, now, now we understand the majesty of his name and all, everything that's contained within that name. You know, for, for the most important thing is that you're pursuing him in his ways, you know, and you're going to know his name when you're pursuing him in his ways, because you're going to want nothing but him, the truth, the honest, the, the, with breaking down to the bareness. What was written originally? Let's start with that first and then we can go from there. Because if we get to that point, we can start to figure out what is that name that he's told us that's so important what does it really mean? What does it mean to us once we get a hold of who he is? Once we hear his, his voice calling us and drawing us unto him, now we start to examine who he is and then what he's expecting of us as his people, as his followers. And that's what we're going to be recognized because we're going to be taking on his character, his fruits, you know, his gifts are all going to be on display because we're, we're displaying him. You know, yeah, we wear his name upon us because we know him. We know his ways. We know his character. We know what's expected because he's he, because we're studying him. We're learning. We're seeking him in, in the fullness of who he is. So that to me is what's important to hear. So I'm, I'm interested to see what you got, brother Emeka. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I praise you for this study. Um, it's actually something that's been on my mind too for the last couple of weeks. So it's very interesting um, because Yah has been giving me a lot of clarity um, on this. And one of the things uh, that he's brought to, brought to me, you know, is uh, it's similar to, you know, you having kids, you know, you having children and, you know, they, they bear your name. They bear your family name, you know. Some, you know, some people have big families and cousins and all that, and the family is well known in a community, and you bear that name. And so, when you go out and you act a certain way, you know, let's just say you go out and you're you, this uh, individual goes out and they're caught stealing or something, they have now tarnished, you know, not tarnished, but they have now brought in, you know, that name. To, of the family, you know, to be in question or, you know, to be belittled or, you know, to be lesser than because of their actions, you know, so you get back home to your pops and he's, you know, like, like, yo, you bear our name. What are you doing when you're out there, you know? And it's very similar, you know, you look in scriptures and the people of, of, of Israel, the people of Yashorah, they they literally take on the name of Yah. You know, they take on the name of the Most High, you know, Yermayahu, you know, uh, Isaiah, you know, um, there, there's so many Yahusha, you know, um, Zechariah, you know, you look at their names and they're bearing the, the name and, and, and that characteristic of the Most High. So they can't just take on his name and then go out acting however they want. Um, Proverbs chapter 30 I'm going to read uh, verse 7 through, through verse 9. It says, two things have I required of you. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny you and say, who is Yahuwah? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my Elohim in vain. So you see, like, it's it's your actions, you know, it's it's your, your you know, like you said, going out, like both of you and Rod brought out, going out and representing Yah, 
you know, and um, you look at Psalms, Psalms 138, verse 2, it says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So he says he magnifies his word. Uh, 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 David said that he magnifies his word above all his name. So what does that mean? It means that he magnifies his word first. First, if we look at the order, his word is most important because that is establishing who he is. Yah says, you know, scripture said that, you know, uh, Yah says that, you know, he's, when he sends his word forth, that it shall not return void, that it shall accomplish that which he pleases. So when he sends his word, it's like he's sending his guarantee. You know, that's why a lot of people say, like, you know, all a man has is his word. You know, because when when you send your word out, you want that word to come back solid. You know, you want people to see, look, my word has been established. My word is good. You know, you look in the beginning, everything Yah created in the beginning, after he created it with his word, he said, it is good. So Yah's word is good. And without Yah's word being good, guess what? His name has no value. So he magnifies his word above all of his name because that is what he stands on. You know, that's why Yahushua said, you know, any man who, who hears my words right and does them is like a man who 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 was founded on a rock who dug deep and founded on a rock because you're founded on the word you are standing on the word you are standing on the word and so that is your foundation your word is everything if your word is no good your foundation is crumbled if yah's word is no good his foundation is crumbled his name has no value at all and so when we bear that name when we bear the name of yah we have to represent it right. We have to represent it according to Yah's character. We have to, our words should be good as Yah's word is good. Our actions should be good as Yah's actions are good, you know. And so when we do those, that's that's the that's the magnitude. We can't. That's not a name. You just take and act however you want and go about however you want. You know, it's a name. It has value to it because Yah's word has value. So you know. Uh, very timely lesson very timely you know and just 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 uh co confirmed also what yeah had been putting in my spirit the last couple of weeks and so um i praise you i praise you for this lesson brother because it was very 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 timely very timely shabbat shalom by the way shabbat shalom everybody <laughs> brother rod you had something yeah no nah, i i just thought that was very good what Emeka said you know because he he, the language he used, or I should say the vernacular he used, um, is very reminiscent of um, kingdom films. Like if you watch films about kingdoms or um, TV shows about kingdoms, which are some of my favorite shows, they, they very often, you know, have that, you know, you, you you went out and you said this. This is what I told you to say. You brought shame to my to our family, you know. And it's 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 the exact representation of of the picture that we need to see when it comes to that. Like he is our Elohim, he is our Yahuwah. We have an exhibition and a word to carry that he's given us. And if it's upset in any way it brings shame and i thought i thought that you know what he expressed um kind of you know brought to life some of the things i was thinking as well so i just wanted to share that it was important hallelujah i agree you know uh, that is, that is really the point you know we are the set apart chosen ones of yahuwah and we are you know uh considered yasharel um then we have a certain way we have to walk and live you know we have to understand that we represent yahuwah we represent his kingdom we are you know the uh kings and priests of this kingdom you know we're the ones that are the face of of yahuwah's kingdom 
on this earth right now. You know, so we cannot bring his name into a shame like you guys were talking about. And I think that's a perfect way to capsulize this is we have to be uh, really paying attention to our lives now, you know, how, how we represent, you know, how we live, how we walk, you know, the things that we do, you know, it's, it's quite simple that he has a standard that he has set for his people, you know, and, and he's getting his people to that place. And this is one of the key things we got to understand who he is, you know, and the importance of the meaning of his name, I think, is more than anything else. What does that mean? You know, that was a key thing that it really got me in the beginning of my walk was when I seen his name broken down letter by letter and what the meaning of those letters represent. And then to be able to see the story or the picture line that his name is speaking to us, you know, so people see it a little different ways, but it's still saying the same story. He is you know, his name is showing the creation aspect of who he is, you know, the life-giving aspect of, of the breath that he's putting in our lives, you know, and, and he also is revealing even his son in that, in that Ua, you know, and I think that Yahoo, you know, when we, when we see that, it changes a whole lot because it comes into play with Yehuda and, you know, that is his tribe that the, you know, the, the Messiah came from. So we start to see how it all ties together and fits together when we start to see the truth of his name and how it fits in every aspect of his word becomes alive because of it. You know, his name is important because when I first understood this and I rejected all of the other names that are in the, in the English Bibles and I began to use that name that he gave for himself and his, and his son, I seen a difference in my life, in my understanding of scripture. It became alive to me. It began to speak in ways that it never did before. Even after years and years of, of studying scripture and being, being an ordained minister and all of those things that I was in my past life, you know, um, when, when that realization came of the, the name that had been taken from me, and when I plugged it back in, it was like I plugged into a power source which I see his name being, you know, his son's name has got power to it, you know, and there's so much that's contained in that name that we have to study it. We have to understand what it means, not just say a name like we do in, in the Western world where my name happens to be, you know, Richard or Rick, you know, people know me by that, but they don't really know what does that name mean? You know, what is behind the meaning of the name? Does it display my character? which means a leader, you know, I guess in some sense it, 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 that did come true, but it's the same with the father. It's the same with his son. So the name are, are important in Hebrew. And, and there's a reason that he has made it known that his name is important to those that follow him and that believe in him. Because now we have an understanding that our praise our worship is completely directed to him. It's no longer just cast out there and, and thinking that we're sending it to the right address, you know, and finding out later that it actually went to another address and there was another Alheem that was getting all the praise that was due to him. And that's one thing that has to stop in my mind. It had to stop for me. So there was no way that I can uh, continue to have those names on my lip after knowing the importance that it is to him. I know you, even with you guys, it's your, your, your name is important. You are known by your name. You, you do things to try to, to elevate your name and, and stature and respect and all of those things. And so we have to understand it even more heightened in when it's pertaining to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Mecca. That was good. Brother Williams, Donna Williams. Shabbat Shalom, my friend. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. First, I give honor to the Most High Yah and the Son Yah who comes here. Uh, another great study that you allowed the uh, Most High to uh, teach through you again, uh, Elder Richard. It's a powerful one. Um, yes, the name, the name is is worthy to be praised and to be stressed out, to be known. But uh, as Elder Rod said earlier, it's more than just knowing the name. Uh, we have to live accordingly to his instruction. 
and uh, keep them all because um, just knowing his name, when we get to the judgment, we're not going to make it into his kingdom just calling on his name and broke his commandments because if you break one, we're guilty of them all. So it's more in the walk. Um, it's good to know, to come out, to learn his name and the, what his name mean and to spread it out to others that they would come off the paganism names and these titles, but it's more in the walk. And um, we must really, really examine ourselves. Is we walking in his instruction? Are we keeping his instruction? Are we teaching his instruction? So it's more so in the walk. And the name is yes, we all should know his name. Uh, these name, his name is not being preached or teached in these churches these days. They're going by what they are listening to and reading in these so-called Bibles that has been translated and transliterated, which has come to naught. And we are uh, they're blaspheming and not even knowing it. But it's good for us to come out and be set apart to know his name, to really share his name and his son Yahushua HaMashiach's name, but it's more so teaching his instructions how to walk out his commandments and be a doer of his word. That's what's going to make us in because it's just like your kid knows your name, but if you don't keep the instructions you tell him to do in your home at a certain point, you're going to reward him as to what he's done. He, he may come knocking at the door calling on your name, but that don't mean he's going to get back in because he disobeyed your commandments. So it's more, it's more so in the walk, and I praise y'all for this message because it has been on my mind to even spread it out because uh, as we come into this walk now, we hate to even hear the name JC or the LORD, but we have the understanding of what it is. So therefore we have to share what his name really mean and, and let people know that you're really blaspheming. And although we're, we're, we go through a fight just to spread his name out because people have been deceived so many years that they think they're calling on the right name, JC, and they're thinking there's power in the name of JC, but then there's suffering around them and in, in their families because they don't know. And not only because they don't know his name, they are not walking out the commandments and keeping them. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Well, you, you're echoing what scripture says, you know, because they don't know his name, because they're not honoring his ways, you know, he's, he's, he's putting a curse out there, you know, and it's not necessarily that he's putting a curse on them specifically, but it's on their actions, you know, their choices that they're making that are in opposition to him and his ways and his will, you know, so we have to be very careful that, uh, to understand, you know, there's a walk that we have to have in this. It's not a religious thing. It's actually, it's a living thing. It's an obedience thing. It's just, it's a changing your character. It's a change in who you are. And when that, when that changes that happens in your life, you begin to reflect who he is in a more positive manner. And, you know, his name is important. You know, he, he's declared it how important his name is. So we cannot, you know, it's our responsibility as his called ones, his chosen ones to, to be able to reveal this to those that are lost and don't know, you know, after that, it's up to them, you know, the Ruach to continue to grow that in that person. But, you know, it has, it's all like a big package. You know, it's, it's interesting when I'm hearing this and the discussion and the study, how it's a big package of, yeah, it's the name's important, but so is, understanding and walking out and keeping his commandments because all the way through scripture he tells us his name but he's always got his commandments and being obedient right there with it when he's telling us something these are the things that he's telling us that are important that we need to pay attention to and you know that's what's going to change us and allow us to be more like him hallelujah brother jp shabbat shalom good to see you this morning hallelujah shabbat shalom miss Faka. My family, hallelujah. Uh, man, praise Yahuwah for these days. They're so beautiful. Um, one thing I wanted to, to bring up is, is um, that word Adonai, you know, the word Adonai, you know, how they replace it by itself alone. And I think that's one of the areas that I was having a lot of trouble with, with some people, some brothers and stuff in our conversations. I was uh, speaking with um, 
because they were listening to music that that would just replace and it would say Adonai, Adonai. And I would say, man, that don't make sense. Like he has a name. Like why are we, I'm going to, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, there's, there's, you know, I hear a lot of, uh, you know, Christian type, there was some Christian songs that they've replaced the names and it makes sense to me. It's good. I'm like, all right, it's cool. It, it, Cause uh, there's a lot of flow in it or whatever, but, but when you're just, you are unmuted. when you're just hearing only the, the uh, you are unmuted. Oh, I don't know who's that one. Who's the un unmuted. <laughs> good. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, but I, so I wanted to bring up a verse that a brother just shared with me. Um, that it's one of the areas that I think is a great verse to um, share with people because this verse has all three of the, uh, these titles and his name in there. Uh, well, two titles in the name and the, that verse is Amos 3.13. And Amos 3.13, if you read it like in a King James, it'll say, hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob Say it, the Lord God, the God of hosts. That's what it says in the King James. You know what I mean? But if you go to the interlinear, it'll say, Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, says Adonai, Yahuwah, Elohim of the hosts. And so it's pretty amazing that this one verse has the, the title Adonai with Yahuwah and Elohim. And so what it really shows that the King James, they tried their best, of course, like we all know, just like every other translation, to try to make it make sense, but it can't make sense the way they wrote it in the King James. In Amos 3.13, the way they wrote it, it, it doesn't make sense because the first thing you have is, is it, it says the Lord, but it's actually saying Adonai. And then they put God, but it's actually saying Yahuwah. And then at the end, they put the God, which is actually saying Elohim there in the, in the, uh, in the text. So it just, but because they put a comma in the, in the King James, they try to make it make sense. Like, oh, see, this is how it's going to make sense, you know. But it's one of these areas where I'm like, this is what we need to do. We need to investigate, investigate, you know. And when you take out that title, the Lord, you're going to really start to see what's underneath it. And you're going to be able to identify, okay, this is the truth. And so I just wanted to bring that out because I thought that was a very important point, you know, to, to not say that we can't say Adonai, right? It's not that we can't say Adonai. It's just that it has to be connected with Yahuwah's name. If you're saying it singular, like by itself, and you're referencing Yahuwah with that and saying, oh, Adonai, it's like saying you know, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's a title that only fits. It's like Mr. You know, Johnson or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you're putting Mr. there, but you got to have Johnson there. You can't just say Mr. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it's just something that um, it, it can cause division. You know, when you, when you're starting to fellowship with people, um, some of the messianic music out there that they're, they're trying to incorporate some of the Judaism and Christianity and blend it. Instead of saying, no, look, we're set apart. We're just, we're just set apart, period. Like, we ain't Messianic. We're not Judaism. We're not Christianity. Because all that's already been in, entangled in all kinds of different ways. We're set apart over here. It's, it's something brand new. It's just, you know, we're brand new in that way, like, clean and fresh. Like, so I got other scriptures, but I, I just want to bring that out. I just thought a lot of that was a, a beautiful thing. I'm glad you brought that out because that's important for us to see because you're right. I have a problem with that too, because anytime you're taking out and replacing the name with another title, you're, you're bringing his name to not to nothing. Adonai is not a replacement for his name. It should never be a replacement for his name. It meet in the problem. How it got there is because they've taken out the name and they put in, the L-O-R-D, where Adonai basically means my L-O-R-D or my master. So it's in a whole different context when you're talking about my master, my Lord, versus the name. And that's where your point comes in, where 
yeah, you don't got to be afraid to use Adonai because of what it means, but put it in the right context. Don't don't replace the name with it because then you're causing, I believe you're, you're, you're breaking the commandment by doing that. Anytime we change the name or replace it with another title, if you will, or another name, we're, we're in danger because that's, in court, that's very important what you brought out because a lot of the, like you said, they do that a lot. Where the name should be, they got Adonai in there, you know? And I understand their confusion and why it's confusing, like you said, showing in the King James. When you, you remove the name, it does nothing but bring confusion. That's a great analysis right there, analogy. Because you plug that name back in, now it makes more sense, right? You know, now you can use those other terms and they're not, you know, they're not uh, a negative uh, a consequence of it, I guess, you know. But I'm, I'm thankful that you brought that out because that is a big error that, and a big no-no in my opinion, you know. Let's use it the way it is, you know. You know, Yahusha, you know, that, you, you know, there's another tie that they get in into the Christian uh, or I'm sorry, the English translations where they where they're saying that Yahusha is also known as the L O R D. So now when they put my add on, you know, which is the Hebrew part of it, or my Lord, if you will, you know, they they confusing that and they're muddying it up, and you really can't make heads or tails of what the scripture really is saying, you know. And that to me is what the the clarifying point of his name because when you put his name right there or his son's name where it belongs now the mother words they start to add and compliment you know my adon yahusha my adon yahuwah you know my adonai yahuwah you know my lord yahuwah i mean you can't you don't got to be afraid of using my lord in there it's when you get to the you know that we're starting to get dangerous because now you know you're you putting you're you're changing out a name his name for a title so thank you, brother, for that. I really do thank you that, that clarity is important. And, and, and just to add um, the, the uh, one verse that I wanted to highlight that was beautiful. Uh, well, I have like three, but, but one that was like I, is Psalm 69, um, 35 and 36 you had brought out. It says, for Elohim will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. And that was a beautiful verse because it says, they that love his name. And again, it just makes you have to question, what is his name to love that you're going to love? Like, you, you can't just say, you have to, it, to me, it, when you start to be honest with yourself, you know, as a believer, when you start to be honest with yourself, you question, what does that mean? What name are you loving? And then you get to the, when you went to um, Revelation, and I'll just, my last verse, uh, uh, Re Revelation 14, 1, he said, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the mountain Zion and with him 140 and 4,000 having his father's name written on their, in their foreheads. And again, it's like this name that's written in their foreheads, like, what is this name? And you have to be honest, like you do, like, and that's the only way we're going to accomplish and get overcome the battle of the entanglement of indoctrination is to be honest with yourself. Forget about what you learned. Forget about the church. Forget about, you know, your pastor, your teachers. Just go to the word and say, let me go and look. Let me seek. And Yahuwah is going to show you, you know, and that's the beauty, you know, so. Just want to bring, I love that verse. I just thought that was a beautiful one. Of course, um, all the verses are beautiful, but I always like to highlight one at least. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your highlighting those verses because it's important. And that brings me back to the reverence or the fear of Yahuwah. You know, if you don't reverence his name or you don't fear his name or misusing his name or, or those type of things, that shows you, do you really belong to him? Because the fear of Yahuwah, the reverence of Yahuwah, is the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of it all. We have to understand and acknowledge the importance of his name. We have to bring that back to the relevance that this is the foremost. You know, his, his name is what separates him from every other Ahim out there. You know, all of those that want to hide under the titles of L-O-R-D, Adonai, you know, I guess Hashem is only really kind of directed back at that but 
you know even that use of that when you're saying the name well why not just say the name why you got to use again almost like a title or a directive of hiding the name behind Hashem you know I that logic really fails escapes me of how they came to that conclusion I guess back in the day where they said it was too kadosh or too holy to even say but if you look at the scriptures, what they say is the opposite. He doesn't want to hide his name. He wants everybody to know his name. So by putting this Hashem and Adonai, they're doing exactly that. And I really don't understand that logic. And maybe that's part of what brought this separation or the scattering because they lost the reverence of who his name was and who he is, you know, and they wanted to bring it down. And I don't know what, I really can't understand that logic of, of that, but you know, I'm glad that I have the, the, the understanding of his name and that it is on my lips now. You know, it's on my name. It's on my forehead because that's what I think about. You know, it's in my, in my hands because I'm putting my effort to making sure that everybody knows his name. You know, you know I'm not saying you got to say it, pronounce it 100% perfect uh, because, you know, people say we can't know that 100%. But we do know the four letters that are there. And we do know the name, the writing of his Messiah's name also. So there's no excuse that we can't go search out and at least the, that's why I don't have a whole lot of problem with the, um, the modern Hebrew trying to pronounce his name in the way they understand it to believe would be true. You know, and you can see how by putting vowel points and all the changes that they've made that it's actually changed the sound of the name, but the, the written version is the same. So, you know, I, I think the pronunciation aspect isn't the most important part. It's the understanding what the name is and making your attempt to give it to him only, you know, to use that name only. And that's the way I see that aspect of that. You know what I'm saying? So praise Yahuwah. All righty, uh, Brother Joseph or Sister Francia, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I just I was thinking that in the Hebrew the word sh uh, name is sham that also means fame or reputation and memory so it, it does goes beyond uh, naming Yahuwah but knowing his reputation his his works and it brought to my mind um, the story in Samuel 2, chapter 12, where Prophet Nathan is um, rebuking King David because he killed Uriyahu or Raya. And he said in verse 14, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of Yahuwah to blaspheme him. So by David going against just commandment he he gave the opportunity to his enemies to blaspheme the name of yahuwah the reputation of yahuwah the, the, the yahuwah family you know wow that, that, that's pretty good to, that you recognize that um you know and brought that forth because that's that that is a <laughs> that's an important thing to, to to really recognize and spot so thank you for sharing that with us thank you Hallelujah. great study Thank you very much. And you have now added to that study and made it better. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Brother Kevin, Shabbat Shalom to you. Well, where did he go? Oh, there you are down there. Okay, you got to unmute yourself, brother. There you go. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Elders, Mishpaka, and of course my deacon. I'm a coattail in what he said. Uh, let's go to Matthew 22, 44. I'm going through all these different um, versions of Scripture: New International, New Living, King James, New American. They all say the same thing. The Lord said to my Lord. Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Okay. Now I'm going to go to uh, the Sefer. 
2244. And Yahuwah said unto my Adonai, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And I've struggled braining people from JC. And I, can't say, I couldn't say I struggle. They struggle with wrapping their head around how in the beginning, don't say his name, but Elder Rick, you just said, yeah, them four letters, we know what his name is. We know what his name is. So bringing him from Adonai, Christos, Jesus, Isus, and of course, I'm gonna say uh, uh, JC, all those names, all those, no, don't say his name. I came in late on the study, but I'm sure this got covered, but there's one and um, Psalms also says the same thing, how they changed this word. Lord said to my Lord, that isn't, that's confusing. They getting caught up in their, <laughs> in their game, trying to uh, mislead or to keep you away from his Kadosh name. Thank you. The perfect examples that continue to come forth that are confusing if you don't have the true name place where it needs to be. You know, that's the, that should really motivate anybody that is on this quest to go try to find the, the scriptures that have restored the name back to where it belongs. You know, I did, and it changed my life. So, and I know people say, well, I'm just changing it as I see it, but you still got to see it, you know, and to me, that's part of it too. So I, for me, I had to get rid of it all and bring in his true name, a, a, a restored version of his name in the scriptures. And there's a few of them, you know, you got this, the Sefer, you know, you got the, the Bessora, you know, the Nazarene version, you got Hallelujah scriptures, you know, they're not, they're not perfect either, but you know, at least they've put the name back where it belongs and that's the start. So. Uh, could I, could I ask something else? Uh, well, point out something else that, JC has brought a lot of people in to what's known as Christianity. It brings them in, that name. They see a power in that name. And then when they get there, they're like myself, they're like, no, something's missing. So you start going back in time, which brought me all the way back to the Hebrew. And then when you learn, it's almost like, well, thank you, JC, for bringing me to the truth. Otherwise, I wouldn't have found it. I'd have, I'd have just laid up and not did anything. But because of JC, it brought me to the real truth of Yahusha. So uh, I've had a, not a debate, but a, a serious conversation with a true believer, and an, an elder at that matter. And how, how did he put it? He said, hey, if it wasn't for that name, I'd have, I'd have still been out there doing whatever. And so I'm, I, I question that I struggled with it and said like, yeah I know but 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 can't deny the truth that name did bring a lot of people over to further search out that matter of his name and led them to Yahusha and Yahuwah hallelujah well I don't know if I want to give credit to the name there you go I understand, I understand your point I think it's the word that, that actually brings us to the knowledge and, uh, and ultimately we begin to question, you know, because there's a lot of people that uh, they, they stick to that name and they won't let go of that name, even after you reveal to them the truth about the name. So, I, you know, I understand your point and I believe that it's the actual, uh, it's the, uh, the church uh, environment, uh, Christianity, Catholicism, you know, any of those that are using the structure of the scriptures. And I think it's the scriptures that are the importance in, even in the churches, you know, even with the, with the messed up names or the, the names that have been replaced there, you still have the foundation of the word there. That's still his word that's there. And that's what motivates us to, to dig deeper, to study, to find ourselves approved. To, to, and all of a sudden now when our hearts really truly desire him and his ways then he, you know, I think there's a point where that's when he can start drawing and revealing his name and all of those type of things. But because it's just a name by itself really doesn't matter to people if they don't know 
what that name represents or, you know, what the, what's behind the name. So, but I understand and appreciate your point there. Thank I you. I'll choose Thank you, Elder. Credit. <laughs> Thank you, Elder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, praise Yahuwah and Yahusha's name above all. Hallelujah. Sister June, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, as always, for all the studies that you do compiling these messages and the scripture references. And I know it's a lot of hard work, uh, and I appreciate your um, service. You know, I know you do it as unto Yah, but we get to benefit when you, you know, present it here with us and then also people so many people viewing online and there and there are, are people in droves it would appear coming recently into the understanding of you know who yah is you know just to give a little glimpse of you know we have a form on our website where people request to join and a lot of them are indicating within the last one to three months, they have just realized or come into the understanding of Yahuwah. And we ask them, well, how did you find out about our website? And a lot of them are saying they're Googling Yahuwah. <laughs> so it's, it's really exciting, um, you know, if we were to measure, like there's an there's a name, just an ongoing increase in people coming into this understanding, um, you know, praise Yah. And I just wanted to make two quick, uh, I don't know, comments, additions, or, or I don't know what to label it. But I wanted to kind of echo um, some sentiments that, that Brother Emeka and my hubby brought out. Um, one, I was looking at the scripture he brought out, Matthew 7, verse 21, where um, the Messiah is speaking not everyone who says to me master master shall enter into the reign of the heavens but he who is doing and i want to emphasize that word doing the desire of my father in the heaven so you know i think the sad reality is there are going to be some people who are saying the correct name or the name is we know it to be correct who still may not you know, make it into the 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 um, New Jerusalem. And I know you're not saying that saying the correct name is your ticket into, you know, eternal salvation. That's not what you're saying. But I just wanted to emphasize the doing part, um, which we've, you and everyone so far as agreeing, we, we have to also do something. And, and I just wanted to share personally, you know, just looking over my, personal life. And I know everyone's testimony is very different. You know, my mom put me on a Sunday school bus from age five. <laughs> so I've been growing up, you know, in the church and indoctrinated in, in Christianity and so forth. You know, the Constantine system and the whole nine. I went to Bible college. Uh, but I will say this, you know, and, and I, I understand everyone may not um, see or believe the same way. Uh, but I feel very, very strongly that, um, you know, I had and still maintain to this day a personal relationship with the Messiah. He was undeniably real in my life. And, you know, even though I'm very Baruch now to know his proper name, and to call upon him properly. I do not believe that when I came into the truth that I began a new relationship with a new Messiah. He's still the Messiah mm -hmm. that I met, you know, and accepted into my heart who radically changed my life, you know. And again, I'm not trying to downplay the absolute importance of the Father's name and, and knowing it and saying it correctly. I mean, that's why I'm part of the assembly of Yahuwah. <laughs> you know, that's um, very key and instrumental. 
but saying his name correctly, we could still miss the boat. And I do believe there are people out there like myself who have a true relationship with the Messiah, but just haven't been awoke yet to the proper way to call upon him. And so I just wanted to um, share those thoughts and thank you again for this message today. Hallelujah. You know, I agree with you. It's the, the Messiah, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, are saying that uh, JC is the lawless one and that type of stuff. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that depiction um, because the name may be, have been changed and uh, there's, there may be a possibility that that, you know, that that could be, you know, uh, linked to, I guess what they call anti-Messiah. But the, the message did not change. You know, the Messiah taught and spoke the message. If you didn't know his name, the message remained the same. You know, he's directing you back to the Tanakh. He's directing you to his father. He's showing you how to walk this out, to live this according to a, a righteous life, being a doer, as you said. And that's that really what it comes down to. You know, the names are of great importance, no doubt about that. But as Brother Mecca had highlighted, his word has, has been elevated or magnified. I don't want to say elevated so much, but magnified above his name because it's the word that's out there that's speaking to people beyond the names. So it's the principles that are written in the scriptures, you know, and it's and it comes down to you and I to have to study this out and to dig into it, the proper meanings. Did they, did they translate them properly or is there different meanings that could be placed in there as we find in our studies that we, there is clear translations that we can come up with ourselves uh, if we break it down. And that's how we find these errors and expose the, the things that have been perverted or changed um, or added, if you will, because they are in there. So we have to do our due diligence to study this the, and go back to the original, because quite honestly, that's the best that we can do to try to bring this forward into a more clean, purified state that will speak to us and teach us and show us how we ought to walk and live, to be doers of that word, as the scripture says, and as Sister June just said, you know, and I think that is the message. It's those that do, you know, um, there's going to be a lot of people out there, they, they, they hear this name and they're intrigued by it. And they, just like we see in the scriptures where they try to cast out demons, they didn't have the, the Ruach in them, but they still were able to try. They still heard the name. They still seen it. They tried to replicate what they were seeing and hearing, but that didn't give them the true uh, Ruach that, that changes and separates and, and really makes the change in our lives. So it, it comes down to, I'm the same as you, Sister Jim. From the child, I was put on, I was taken into church and bust even the same as you family went, whatever. So I grew up knowing the word. I grew up loving the word and the Messiah and everything that represent that he taught and, and, and all of that. I knew his name at that point as what it was, but now I have a better, higher understanding of the true name and what really happened. And that really is what I think takes us from the called to the chosen because now we're pursuing the action we be, we're pursuing the doing we're not just hearing it only we're, we're becoming uh doers of it we're living this each and every day and we're taking on the likeness of mashiach and what he taught us and how he showed us how we ought to walk and live so that we honor the father the way that he did and we can take his example and start calling on the name Start putting the, the reverence for that, for the name back where it belongs and watch how your life changes. You know, I, I, all of us here that are on this assembly can all attest that the changes that that has made in our lives when we made these adjustments. So I'm speaking to those that are listening for the first time that are seeking and are, are trying to find the truth. Seek and you will find, he says, knock and the door will be open to you. 
You know, you have to pursue him. If you pursue him in his ways, you will find him. And that's what's going to change you and make you one of his chosen ones that do love his name, do respect his word and his ways and live it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is, this is really good stuff. I really appreciate this insight that he's given to us. And now it's up to us to put it into practice. Hallelujah. Um, I don't see any other names. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add this morning? I do see Brother Kevin. Come here, brother. Shabbat Shalom once again. Shabbat Shalom. Yahweh is the word, and the word is Yahweh. Let me ask you something, Elder. Your real name isn't Rick, is it? It's Richard? Richard, yes. My name is Kevin, and people want to call me Kev, and I don't take take that. I'm like, no, my name is Kevin. Don't call me Kev. Uh, and I, I associate that with what Sister June said, what you said, and hence why I started off with the word is Yahuwah. And that's, that's how I relate that name thing. Uh, but it, as you stated, it points back to his word. And his word is Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Well, I'll say, I think the word is Yahusha. You know, that's what we by Yahuwah. So, you know, there, you know, it's all, it, there's that, like that bow and marrow thing. How do you divide the two? You know, but, you know, I, the point is made, uh, and I agree with you. Brother, brother JP? Well, I just wanted to highlight the, the last two verses I had from the uh, study that I thought were beautiful and of course, we read over the verses all the time as we study in our own personal time or, or whatnot. But John 5.43, it said, I am come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in, my, in his own name, him you will receive. And again, it just highlights that fact of what is his father's name. You have to, again, we have to be honest with ourselves, like I was speaking earlier, to question that. You know, if you don't know his father's name, and you're just calling him the Lord, it's like calling it, saying Mr. It's just a title. It's just, you are not really, you're not calling on, so it's just like an amazing part of this scripture, of this understanding of what is his father's name, he says. And then the next one there is, um, the last one, should I say, is Philippians. And this is a beautiful one. I, I always think this is such a beautiful one. It's Philippians uh, 2, um, chapter uh, 2 verses 9 it says wherefore Elohim also ha hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Yahusha every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Yahusha HaMashiach is master to the glory of Elohim the father and now and again it really will take us back to you know again it's just magnifying the son and the father but again to the glory of the father and so it just trickles back to me to that last verse of uh, of john of knowing his name because just like i had read that first one out of um what was it psalms sixty nine thirty six, and it said if you love his name and if you don't know his name then the loving of his name doesn't apply because you can't you don't know his name you don't know nothing about him and if you don't know his name, then how can you call and ask for anything in the name of Yahusha? Because Yahusha said, you ask in my, in my name, my father will grant you. So now you, it's like you have to know his son's name. You have to know the father's name. You, this is a must. This is vital. If you don't know it, you're just, you're, you're not in the same camp. You're in a different camp. You're in a, in a, in a like in a, when I say camp, I mean like a covenant, like a relationship, you know, and so... I just want to bring those because those are the last two verses um, that I thought were beautiful during the study. I was like, wow, they, they really were touching me in that way of, in my heart to say like, you know, this is so vital. And um, if a person calls on the Lord, then you're just, you're really not getting that full affection. You're not getting that full affection and full reverence to really call on his name because as we, you look, people can look in the scriptures. Abraham was called the Lord. You know, you have every, like king was called the Lord because they were the king, they were the Lord of their, you know what I mean? Of their kingdom, of their castle, 
of the house. So it's not that, you know, so I, I just hope and pray that, you know, people, if they are hearing this, that they go underneath the surface of, of, the, of the English words and go and look and seek for yourself, you know, using the Blue Letter Bible, using Bible Hub, using the, the J, uh, JP, I think, or was it the Green Center Linear, you know, use these tools that we have in 2020. 2020, like Yahuwah has really got it, <laughs> tools out there for us now, you know what I mean? There was a time when you had to go to your, you know, you had to go to a teacher because he knew everything, but now you got everything for us. So it's what they call it, the age of information. You know, the age of information is like, all the information is here. You know, we have no excuse now. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Bro. You brought an interesting question that made me think of it in this way. You said that every knee will bow to the name of Yahusha. What is it about Yahusha's name that everybody will bow for? Why, why do you think that is? Do you think it has to do with him? Or do you think it has to do with the name that he's been given? That, that takes us back to the one that actually truly is the Savior, right? Yahuwah. Because his name actually means that it's Yahuwah that saves you, right? Yahuwah saves. So every knee uh, will bow before that name because it's taking you back to the Father. Because everything that Yahushua does points you back to the Father. Even though that he's been given that position of authority and, and reign in the kingdom, but it's still ultimately he gives all the glory, all esteem back to the Father, which is, I believe, why every knee will bow before Yahushua, because he contains the Father's name, you know, he, he's came in that name. It's that power of the name. It's all of that's contained in that. So I think that primarily may be the reason why not only because he has that position also. I don't want to take that away from him, but I think that it's tied back to the authority of the name that he's been given by the Father, you know, that he came in. So, hallelujah. Brother Rod, and then I'm going to head to Brother Will. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to not convolute, you know, what's being said, you know, because <clears throat> there is um, – there is an ignorance that one has when he has a desire for Yah, based upon scripture, right? So we, we're, we're given these scriptures and we, and we look to the person and character of what's there, right? But we're given these names, right? Not only because they're written in the, in the, in the versions that we have, but they're preached, right? So that's what we hear. But as you continue to look into scripture, I think that, that Yah leads those who have a true desire after him, he reveals it to them, even when they're calling on the wrong names. So I don't want people to start thinking like that, 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 that Christianity isn't a pathway to the real truth. And to say that we, you know, we're not being heard by him, I think is not true. Because I believe that we are. I think that he hears us. I think that each and every last one of us was in that position, whether we were in Christianity, whatever faith we believe, if we didn't have a faith, there was a desire to know him, right? Because he put that desire in us, right? It's not something we search for, it's something he put in us. So we have to be careful about what we communicate um, in saying that there are, because there are, I, I know several people in, in you know, the fellowships that I went to that have a heart and really want to obey. They have questions and they don't understand. They listen to the preacher, the pastor, and they're like, that doesn't sound like what I'm reading. There's got to be more. You know, these people are starting to, to, to now have the truth revealed to them. So let's not lose that sight because we were once there. You know, scripture is true. Calling on his name and knowing what his name means, but his importance. But there's a there's a pathway, a portal, so to speak, um, that he takes us through when we don't know his name, even though we've been fed the wrong names. That doesn't hide who he is from us. He still allows us to see him even through the false names, right? So we got to remember that when we're conveying what truth is, um, because if we don't, we're, we're, we're telling people they're condemned because they don't know the name. He never condemned me. He has me here now. So we gotta gotta be careful about that communication when we're looking in scripture and we're trying to understand the paths that he takes us all through 
to get us to the full understanding, right? Because he, ta he says in scripture, he takes us from faith to faith, from understanding to understanding. We have a level in which we climb to fully know who he is. So uh, I just wanted to bring that out. Thank you, brother. I agree with you. That is exactly, you know, there is no condemnation in, from me in, in any of those type of religions because um, I was part of one of those as many, if not all of you, you know, we're in some aspect or some form of it. So, but he does, and it goes back to what we were talking earlier. It's about his word, what we know about him and his character through his word. And then once we are, and I agree, you know, that that's where that passion and desire comes to be able to do it the right way. And then we start pursuing him and, and, and all of that has to do with this journey that we're on. He's got to bring us out of, out of her somehow. That means we're in her. We got to come out. So, you know, that's, that's where we all begin, you know, and, and we continue to learn. And so those are important places, you know, that people are hearing the word, you know, whether it's in a synagogue or in a church or wherever it might be, if you're hearing it and it's speaking to you and it's inspiring you to want more of him and to desire more knowledge of him and his ways, then guess what? I think you're probably one of his called for sure. And on your way to being a chosen when you choose to do his way and his will. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Will, you got the final word today. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Oh, I muted you by back. Sir. Go ahead and unmute again. There you go. Yeah, my volume was low. I don't know what's going on my phone. But anyway, uh, this is a very interesting uh, subject. I want to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom. I really enjoyed. Uh, Can you come closer to your phone? Because you are very low over here, too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my phone. It just started. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, it's just low. But that's okay. go ahead. Yeah. So th this topic is one, uh, especially when one first comes to this walk, that trips on quite a bit. And as you mature, uh, and we go through these studies, and I, we went through this study with Brother Jody L. several months ago. Um, you, you're, you're threading off of a, a continuation of what we studied there, but uh, one of the things that I've learned is when Scripture mentions a particular name, you know, um, regardless of what uh, version you're reading, um, what, what really one what really simplified it for me and when it says in my name it's actually meaning in his authority in his authority so you know i try to tell people don't get hung up on all these names that you know so many different people call it. we already understand when we come to the understanding of why you know some are, are calling or naming him certain things you know that's that's not you know something that one should get into arguments over you know it, it's something that has to be sensitively um, um, approached you know with other folks um, but I, I truly believe, you know, when, when scripture is mentioned uh, in his name, it's actually speaking about his authority because scripture tells us, you know, his kingdom is not of this world. So I, I don't believe that uh, an earthly, and you brought that up early, an earthly uh, alphabet is of the, of the kingdom. I believe that an earthly alphabet is of the earthly alphabet. We just through some of our researches and things, you know, we, we, we come down to these conclusions based on some tetragrammatons and, you know, so forth and so on. But I, I want to share a, um, a scripture that really hit home for me one day. And uh, it's in Revelation 19.12, when it mentions his eyes were as a flaming fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written on him that no man knew but himself. So I don't know about anyone else, but that really hits home for me because it sends a, a clear message to me that he, 
when, when John was seen this revelation, you know, this was revealed to him that he had a name written on him that no man knew but himself. So I know this goes a little deeper, but uh, I just wanted to share that and say that I'm really enjoying this study and it's been a Baruch uh, to me. I love you all. And uh, since I'm the last guy, do I need to... Uh, <laughs> we love you too, Brother Will. <laughs> yeah, I know we have a volume issue here. I don't know. We love you, Brother Will. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> yeah, I love you all as well, man. I really do. Well, with that being said, thank you for your final word today and thank everybody for their input. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>